Let Kyrie play. The people are speaking. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. Kyrie Irving has decided not to play, and the people are standing up. Some people are standing up in defense of him. To be clear, there's a lot of people that appear to still be pushing for the government to control what we can and can't put in, into our bodies, including a bunch of people that claim to be pro-choice. They're not. But how did we get here? Let's just do a quick recap. Several NBA players had decided that they didn't want to get the vaccine and it had become an issue. You know, there was a lot of focus on them, notably Kyrie Irving from New York, Brooklyn, New York Nets, Brooklyn Nets, and Andrew Wiggins from the Golden State Warriors. It was really sad to see Andrew Wiggins decide to get the vaccine um, and chorus to get the vaccine because that's not consent. You can't threaten somebody with, you know, losing their job and then pretend that they, they, they consented because if we uh, apply to that same scenario to a woman whose boss says, sleep with me or you get fired, you're not going to say she consented when she has sex with him. You're going to say she was coerced. It, it, it was at, at least sexual harassment, at least and quite possibly sexual assault. So seeing Andrew Wiggins um, break down and watching that, that was a hard thing to watch because I actually believe in consent. I actually believe when I say I'm pro-choice, I actually am. And I, it's not even about the movement or the message. It's about the fact that this man was violated. He was violated. He, he felt that he had no choice but to put something into his body that he didn't want there. That's immoral. Ky Kyrie Irving has decided, I'm not doing it. If you don't want to play me for the season, don't play me. It is what it is. So that brings us to where we are now. The Brooklyn Nets played at the Barclays Center yesterday, and there were hundreds of protesters out there chanting, you know, let Kyrie play. There were people wearing I stand with Kyrie shirts. There were people holding I stand with Kyrie signs. There were people with don't tread on me signs, American flags. Um, there were some other flags, but we'll get to that in a moment. And other shirts and, and other people. But the interesting thing is that you have people out there that are opposed to these vaccine mandates. And the vaccine mandate in New York City, that is the reason why Kyrie can't play, is the key to New York City um, that de Blasio put in place. Horrible law, horrible uh, politician, horrible person. Fuck you, de Blasio, with both middle fingers in the air. But <laughs> let's go to what people are saying, because you do have a side of people who um, were out there in support of Kyrie's decision, but you have a side of people, you have a contingent of people, which is a very large contingent of people, and they have a significant influence in the media, significant um, control over the media, and they're sending a different message. You've got a lot of these other people that are providing this message and pushing a message as if the only people supporting Kyrie Irving, the only people opposed to these vaccine mandates are Trump supporters, are Donald Trump, are Ted Cruz, are MAGA, you know, people. And they're ignoring the fact that a lot of black people do not want to take the vaccine. There are black people, there are Hispanic people, there are people that didn't vote for Donald Trump that do not want to take the vaccine for whatever reason. People that just want, and there's people that may have taken the vaccine, but are still opposed to forcing people to put something in their body that they don't want. That's pro-choice. That is what pro-choice actually is. But you have people like Jamel Hill, who is trying to paint this picture. She's lying, she's a liar, and she's a shill, just like Candace, Hill, just like Candace Owens is a shill for the right and is a shill for um, uh, right-wing establishment talking points. Jamel Hill is shilling for left-wing left -wing establishment talking points, trying to push propaganda on people. She's lying, but she's pushing this image that, hey, you know, it's Trump, it's Ted Cruz, it's MAGA, it's January 6th, it's insurrectionists. These are the only people that are supporting Kyrie. That's a lie. In fact, it's not just Kyrie, as I said. You've got so many people in New York City that lost their jobs because of this horrible mandate. But they don't talk about it. 
So somebody like Jamel Hill, who pretends to support black people, she's a shill for the left. That's it. She's a shill for the left and she supports her establishment. If her establishment tells her to go right, she goes right. They tell her to go left, she goes left. What they tell her to do is what she does. She does not give a damn about black people. Just like Candace Owens doesn't give a damn about black people. But Jamel Hill is not the only one. I saw some dude from Canada. Like, dude, you're from Canada. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Talking about, hey, well, the, the, the same people wouldn't be standing with, uh, that, 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 uh, that claim to be standing with Kyrie w wouldn't take a knee with Kaepernick. Well, let me tell you this. I wouldn't take a knee with Kaepernick, but I would stand on the issue. In fact, I would sit on the issue because I, need, I, I would neither stand or, or take a knee for the national anthem. That's me. But I support, I support the protest. I'm just not going to take a knee because I think taking a knee is even worse than standing. I think kneeling is more deferential to the national anthem and to the system that it stands for. But people are trying to paint pictures that are not true, are not based in reality. They're pretending like I've seen tweets of people talking about, oh, show them three black guys. Will they even know which one is Kyrie Irving? But remember when I said there was another, there was some other clothing being worn? This is what they're not talking about. Black Lives Matter was there. Yeah, yeah. Hawk Newsom and Black Lives Matter of Greater New York was there at the protest. They had crossed the barricades um, after the barricades had been pushed aside and they made it to the front of the Barclays Center and they stood there chanting, uh, let Kyrie play. They were carrying Black Lives Matter flag. They were carrying, uh, they were wearing I Stand With Kyrie shirts. And so this is the message. This is what they don't want you to see. This is the lies that these establishment shills, that these enemies of the people are pushing. They're pretending that it's just it's just one side that's against this, as if black and brown people aren't being hurt by these ridiculous policies. As if like the very people that were being praised as being heroes for the pandemic and essential workers didn't get the, a giant F you from uh, these scumbags at City Hall by the, with, with this key to New York City uh, foolishness. It's mind boggling. But it actually reminds me of something. It reminds me of a story, not just a story. It actually reminds me of some, some training I received back when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, um, you know, at, I would go to school and at some point they had, you know, the D.A.R.E. program, you know, the drug abuse resistance. Um, I forgot what the E stood for, but they would come and they would tell us, they would give us like coaching. And for all these years, I thought, it, that coat that it was useless it didn't make sense it never happened right because they said listen they would say okay little kids you got to watch out for these drug pushers these drug dealers they're bad people and here's what they'll do they're going to come to you and they're going to say hey got some drugs do you want some drugs and you have to say no and say hey hey look you don't even have to buy it it's free and you're supposed to say no, I don't want it. And so at this point, we're little kids. We believe that what they're saying, we believe what they're saying is going to happen. And we're like, okay, no, no. They're like, but listen, kids, they're not going to stop there because they don't want you to just take it voluntarily. They're going to keep pushing. They're going to try to convince you to take drugs and you've got to be smart about it. They'll say something like, well, hey, if you try this, it'll make you feel good. Then they'll say, well, look, everybody's taking it. You don't want to be the only one not taking it. And kids, you still got to say no. I, I spent my life in the projects, in the hood. I grew up Bronx, New York, uh, <laughs> South Bronx, uh, Edomore projects. By the way, South Bronx and Edenwall Projects. Like, they're, they're two different locations. I know that. Uh, grew up in Edenwall Projects, later wound up in the South Bronx. Never happened. Never had drug dealers, drug pushers come to me and say, hey, try this. 
Never happened. Thought it would never happen. But it's happening now. But the thing to know is, despite all of that, there's good news because the key to New York City is not going to last very much longer. I'm almost finished my preparing my lawsuit. I've been I, I, I tend to be a perfectionist with these things. So what I'm I'm putting it together. Um, I should be filing it later this week. And I believe I have some superb grounds on which to get it thrown out. And I will keep you posted and let you know what happens when I file it and what how um and how it turns out. And that's my message. Hey, Kyrie, hold on. Help is coming. Beyond the protest, we're going to get this mandate struck down and Kyrie will play. As always, don't forget to give me the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. But if you disagree with me and if you think the key to New York City is awesome and the government owns our bodies and should be telling us what we can and cannot do in every aspect of our life, feel free to give me a thumbs down. But state why in the comment section. I'll see you next time.